Uh, hello, welcome to Heaven or Hell. My name is Ben Copley, and this is Heidi Zasser. Uh, we'd like to uh, uh, thank you for joining us for our, uh, Bible study tonight. Um, I guess uh, we're going to have a study tonight uh, about your salvation uh, and its difference uh, in, in your soul salvation and your walk as a believer. Because there are some uh, that um, believe, I guess, that your walk um, confuse the two, I guess, would, 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 would be what you said. They, have, they say that you have to d demonstrate. Right works in order to be saved um, and that's not really the case uh, you can uh, look over and over in your Bible in Paul's epistles and, and uh, Paul tells us that we're saved of course by grace through faith and not of works um, and that's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 um, and I, just before we get into the study I'd like to just uh, invite, invite you all to, to watch the Sunday broadcast at 4 o'clock and uh, just a little bit of background about what we believe. Uh, we are uh, Pauline, uh, the Apostle Paul was given the, the completed revelation of the mystery, um, which is basically Paul was given some information about your Bible, about God's Word to man, uh, and it was the basically the capstone of all information. Um, it, with, within uh, the mystery, Paul gives us information about baptisms and uh, circumcision and uh, Passover, the Lord's death, the preaching of the cross that was never given uh, prior to him um, and that basically had been kept secret and sealed up in God, hidden in God since the world began. So uh, if you, you want to read um, read that passage, uh, or you were going to read Titus, I guess, right? I was. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Well, first I was going to read Titus 2.11, um, and you were talking earlier, and I noticed that you defined salvation, the salvation of your soul. What you call it? Soul, soul salvation. Soul salvation. Because salvation is used a lot of times in the Scripture, and mm -hmm. not all of those are just about the once and you're done, the time you've trusted Christ right. as your Savior. Right. And in fact, before I even read Titus, I, I would like to read Ephesians. Um, because to me, this is just one verse that says so much. Ephesians 1, verse 13, speaking of Christ, it's like, in fact, I'll start with verse 12, that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ in whom, in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So he's saying, you heard the gospel, and you trusted. And he says, in whom, also after you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So we have a couple of verbs here. We heard the gospel, we believed the gospel, and then he says, after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Um, mm. So, you know, there are a lot of things that happen the moment we stop trusting in ourselves, in our, I was raised this way, I always believed this way, my church taught me this way, my grandma taught me that way, my pastor says this. So we need to know it's in Christ, mm -hmm. it's only in Christ that we can be saved, and it's when we trust in Christ that we are saved and a seal is put upon us. Um, this is almost like a one, two, three step process. This this passage that you just read here, you hear the Word of God, you trust the Word of God. You believe it and trust it, yeah. And when you do those things, He seals you into His Son, the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, there's a seal that's placed on you. And that's, that's similar, I believe, to... Uh, um, that passage, faith cometh by hearing, and Romans hearing, <clears throat> hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, faith comes by you hearing the call of of God the Father into salvation. There's a there's a, a calling to all men. Paul says the gospel went out unto all the world, and there's a calling, and it's the same um, same for all men. Mm -hmm. uh, God leveled the playing field. And said, "I sent my son to die on, 
on the cross and pay for the sins of all all men. You know, to, uh, Corinthians, Second uh, Corinthians is to 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 wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. He sent His Son to die and pay for the sins of all men. And all you have to do is trust that information, and I will save you. So mm -hmm. there's the gospel. You hear it, you trust it. And he'll save you. And that's how salvation works. That how, that's mm -hmm. how soul salvation works. Right. But that's also how salvation works in your everyday life mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. The gospel is always continually calling men. You hear the gospel or hear doctrines from the gospel. You trust them and God will save you. He, you will be, grow up, be mm -hmm. nurtured up. Uh, and be built up in the knowledge of him, you'll be conformed to the image of his son, and that's the, the continually saving part of uh, aspect of the gospel. That'd be sanctification, mm -hmm. um, which uh, means to be washed or to continually be washed. Uh, mm -hmm. so. Well, and the issue with your soul salvation <clears throat> is there's none righteous, no, not one, right? right? So the issue is righteousness, <clears throat> and you know that that's why God gave the law to to Moses, you know, for for the Jews. And whenever I think about this situation, and there's so much that's doctrinal in this, but it's really simple if you look at Romans 10, 1 through 5. There are two important uh, dispensers or, or mediators, or not even mediators, um, men that God used in the scriptures. First, you hear a lot about Moses in the Old Testament because God dealt with Moses and gave that message to Israel. In fact, there's a passage where God said, call all the children of Israel to the mountain and don't let them this, this, this. And he brought lightnings and thunderings. And they, they said, Moses, please tell him not to talk to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? So Moses was always the one that God gave the message to for Israel. Right. And Paul is the one that God gives the message to for us in this age of grace. And you'll kind of see that in this passage. But the main point that I want you to see is that what Moses says about righteousness is different than what Paul says about righteousness. And the reason they're different is because there was a cross. Mm -hmm. Okay, Christ came and died for all men's sins on that cross. So Moses is preaching and teaching before the cross, so his message about righteousness is quite different. Right. So in Romans 10, 1 through 5, and this is a very interesting passage. It's, a, it's Paul talking about Israel, but it could be us talking about people who think they're saved mm -hmm. okay brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be saved for i bear them record that they have a zeal of god but not according to knowledge for being they being ignorant of god's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves under the righteousness of god Here's a big verse, really important. I'd mark it in your Bibles if you haven't. Romans 10, 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that what? Believeth. Believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. So he goes on. But, he's, but in 10, 4, but Paul's not teaching the righteousness of the law to, uh, Paul is teaching the righteousness that's imputed to us. Righteousness through, of faith. Yeah, the righteousness of faith, right, through Christ Jesus. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So that's a big statement. We always hear about the law, do we not? Oh, yeah. All yeah, I ever hear about is the law. You'll go across the countryside and you'll see... Uh, many signs that tell you to te keep the Ten Commandments. Keep the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Right. Can you keep them? Uh, well, the. Can you? <laughs> oh no, I mean I, I've uh, broken quite a few of them okay. in my day. Uh, and not that we're trying to be flippant about that. I don't mean that. But the, the truth of the matter is, is the Ten Commandments is just a small part of the law that mm -hmm. was given to the nation of Israel. Right. Um, and people just don't use. People choose to use the Word of God in the wrong manner mm -hmm. when they tried to put people under the wall, under the law. And, uh, you know, Paul wrote um, many times in his, in his Bible about not going, in his books, about not going back under the law. You know, right. Galatians, that's the, basically the whole theme of yes. the book, yes. is not to put yourself under the law. And the law is a system that says, 
um, God speaking to the person, if you do this, then I'll do this for you. And if you don't do this, then I'll, I'll curse you. If you, right. if you do this, you'll, you'll receive the blessing. And if you don't do this, then you'll receive the curse. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't, don't get me wrong. You know, God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth that mm-hmm. him, that shall he reap right. also. Right. We live in a, 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 we live in a world where bad things can happen to people. And if, um, if you, you know, drive your car too fast all the time, you're likely to get speeding tickets or have a mm-hmm. wreck. Uh, if you drink too much, there's a possibility that you're going to get some type of disease from it. If you smoke too many cigarettes, there's a possibility that you're mm-hmm. going to get too many, you know, uh, some type of disease uh, from that also. Uh, and so God lets you reap um, what you sow in this life. But um, we're saved today under a program where God says that he is offering you a free gift. Mm-hmm. The difference between a free gift and a performance program is God just offers it to you, and you don't have to do anything for it to receive the receive the blessing. Uh, if you go back to Ephesians, just a few <clears throat> a few verses uh, prior to the verse that we read there in Ephesians uh, chapter one, in verse three, um, <clears throat> Paul says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ." who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according as he chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And I'm going to read a few more verses. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made, a, he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. And according to those riches of his grace, we have that forgiveness. And those riches are all those spiritual blessings in heavenly places that we have received just because we trusted uh, when, in Christ's death. Um, you know, and go back to Rome, if you go to Romans 8, you know, it says, uh, let me go back there and read that passage too, because it's very mm-hmm. similar. God is not dealing with with people today um, in a way that's uh, blessings and cursings. When a person gets saved, God gives them all the blessings up front. Um, in verse uh, chapter 8, and. Um, We'll start in verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And those are all the spiritual blessings and heavenly places that we have as a benefit of just accepting the free gift that God offered to us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are a couple of verses that we've talked about that talk about salvation as a free gift. Mm-hmm. And you talked about Ephesians 2, 8, 9. And then in Romans 5, 18, it talks about, um, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of right. life. And we know that, We're talking about a free gift, that soul salvation, as you called it. I like that. Um, That it is a free gift. And as Paul says all through Romans, and especially Romans 3, 21, 22, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. And in verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. You keep hearing that word believe, believe, believe. Romans 1, uh, 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Um, you know, and you see that same theme in the first chapter of Corinthians. I, I want to go there, First Corinthians chapter 1, um, Verse 18, for the preaching of the cross. And that what we're, that's what we're doing here. We're mm-hmm. saying it's by his blood that we can be redeemed. Mm-hmm. We're preaching the cross. But not only did Christ die for our sins, as 1 Corinthians 15 says, 
but he was buried and he rose again the third day. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins. But 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And he goes on. And what we need to see is that salvation is a free gift. And, and I've heard this many times in my life and through a religious system. People are told about Jesus Christ. They're told about his death, burial, and resurrection. And the response that I often hear back is, well, I'm not ready to give up my way of life. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I can stop sinning. Mm -hmm. And they're putting the emphasis on themselves. Right. They're... Does that make sense? Yeah, that's what I, I was just about to say. Something they're they're looking too much at their inadequacies to perform and we're in all order in order right in order to receive God's blessing. And right. God knows that you're a sinner. He knows what you've been born right. into. He knows that you're a creature that's been made subject right. to vanity. You've been made subject to this sinful world that you live in, and God understands that. And that's why He sent His Son to this world to learn obedience he was tempted just like men were and he was obedient unto death so that he might pay for the sins of all the world Amen. and so that we might through him have salvation uh, as and be identified with him God came down and became a man was tempted and died and now uh, through his death we can be identified with him the way that he was identified with us through death, you know, Paul says uh, that he dies daily. That's dying mm -hmm. to yourself that you might live unto God. And that's what Christ had to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was times in Christ's life, I'm sure, and there's, rec there's recorded times where he was fearful, uh, that he uh, was tempted. You know, Satan tempted him in the wilderness for 40 days. Uh, and there was times in the, in the garden right before he goes up to the cross uh, where he was fearful and tempted then also. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Satan was... Uh, pulling on him pretty hard at that time, and I mean, he asked for for the cup of God's wrath to pass, pass, you know, pass from him. He did, mm -hmm. you know, he was he was scared, but then he said, "Not my will, that but thine be done," because he understood that there was a purpose in him coming to this world and dying for the sins of all men. And that's how you die daily. You die to yourself that you might live unto God's purpose that He has. In, in your life. And I don't want to say sound mystical about the will of God in your life. The will of God in your life is is uh, <clears throat> for all men to be, be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. That's the will of God in your life. He would desires for you to be saved mm -hmm. and then he desires you to learn about him. There's only a small right. amount of information that you really need to get saved. You just need to know that yeah. you're a sinner, that God judges sin, the punishment for sin is death, and that the only that the, the way that you get salvation from that is through the Lord Jesus Christ and that it's a free gift. That's yeah. really the only thing that you really right. need to know about salvation. And then after that, there's a wealth of informa information that you can tap into because after that, he places his Holy Spirit in you. He seals you with his Holy Spirit. And now you have the indwelling Holy Spirit, the new man, the new creature right. that can compare spiritual things with spiritual things and go through this book and discern what right. God's righteousness actually is and get to know him. And that's what he desires in your life. That mm -hmm. is the will of God for your life. Right. And I, I want to go back to this looking at someone or yourself and saying, Oh, they must not be saved because look at their life. Right. Look at their works, or I know they're not living up to the standards of the law or whatever. And we need to be very careful not to judge salvation based on <clears throat> outward appearance or performance or whatever. Right. Now, what you just said, I have to say, you're right. He saves, he saves your soul. The body's actually cut off. This body of flesh that sins is literally cut off in God's mind. And because as long as this flesh lives, it's going to lust against right. the spirit. And you could be saved, and I know it from my own life. I was saved for many, many years. And, you know, you sometimes I go, well, oh, look, we have a call. Well. Good evening. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Can, do you have a question for us? Uh, yeah, well, just a kind of a discussion topic. All right. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Hey, you know... Uh, just some, uh, just a fundamental question, and I don't mean to throw us uh, into an unfaithful thing, okay. but it, it's documented that way previous centuries, uh, previous to Christ, 
there there were basically the same Christ stories in different cultures. Oh, I have heard that. All right, thank you. We will definitely address that. I hope Ben knows more about it. Thank you. That's, that is a very good call, very good point. I have heard things like that, mm -hmm. that there are, you know, in the stars, mm -hmm. you know, there, there are different stories of a of a redeeming nature or whatever in different cultures, mm. the Mayans and whatever. Have you heard of all that stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, most of that stuff came out of Babylon. Um, if you will, uh, call her, if you'll read uh, any, if you Google uh, pagan uh, Easter worship, um, there's, a, there's an article, uh, and I don't know what church produced the article, but there's an article that'll... Um, inform you about um, all kinds of things that line up with. And even the Encyclopedia Britannica has a lot of stuff mm -hmm. about where the pagan things came from. Uh, good evening. Thank you for calling no. Heaven or Hell. Do you have a question? No. Hello? Do you have a question? Yeah, I'm a Christian and um, hello? Yes, hello. we're listening. Uh, it's I, I need to turn the TV down because okay, you need to okay. turn the TV down. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Sorry. Okay, I'm a Christian woman, um, and I I do hands. I encountered a, a lady that she's she's not really a palm reader or anything like that. She's a Christian as well. Um, she, I've been having some problems, so I was tempted to ask her a question, and she said that she sees darkness around me, which that's that it, there absolutely is. There, this house that I'm living in, but long story short, um, I wasn't making much money, and I'm trying to get out of this area where I'm living. And she gave me a crystal. It's called citrine, mm -hmm. and she said that that's actually biblical, and that some of the Warriors and, and biblical times would have on citrine uh, shields, and she brought to mention as well that when Jesus was born, that they brought frankincense and myrrh. She also gave me some incense for money and things like that. I'm just wondering, because um, I don't, I don't really believe in soothsayers or anything like that. I think that that um, leads gives way to. Satan popping in somewhere, you know what I mean? Ma'am, can I ask so, you a question? I mean, are the stones, is that correct? Because I have been making money since I went there. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, can you, uh, can I ask you a question? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, yeah. um, let me let me ask you a question about uh, what produces joy in, in your life. Do you, do, do you know that you can read your Bible and it will produce a comfort and a hope in your life um, that's un, unequivalent to anything else. Uh, this is because it sounds like that you go to this uh, this lady to read your palms, and I, I was just wondering, uh, d is there anything about that that ever gives you a soundness or a, a comfort oh, in your no, mind? No, she never, she's not a she, Right. She's not like that. See, she doesn't do that. Right. But the, 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 I don't, I've only been to her one time. Right. I mean, for for another reason, because I own a business and it's right. The the if the, the thing about it is, is that the word of God is pr supposed to produce some things, and that's uh, you being joined uh, with with God the Father uh, is supposed to produce joy and love and peace and and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance, and it's supposed to produce a stability. And soundness in who you are. The the word of God is going to make you be the best person that you possibly can be. But the those the soothsayers, because um, I have I, I have some uh, family that that myself that uh, that goes to those. Most of the time, though, they keep you guessing about what is going to happen in my life. What exactly did that mean? You know, and there's never any real confidence about what the what the thing uh, that that person actually says means, uh, unlike the Word of God that that tells you that you can have uh, the peace that passes all understanding, and that the the God of all comfort shall keep your heart and your mind. 
uh, that you not be no more tossed to and fro. Um, yeah. And so, uh, the only, I, I desire for you and for everybody just to read their Bible more. That's that's yeah. the one thing that produces uh, godly fruit, which is that joy and that peace. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is there are two places in Paul's epistles that I can think of, but that you know where people suppose that gain is godliness mm -hmm. and then there's there are people that he says to avoid those that that you know when you're tying in the crystal to you know and you didn't tie it in per se but you're wondering you said well now i'm doing better financially and whatever right. um but you know in god's word and in this age of grace we're really not promised financial gain no. we're not promised health wealth or prosperity and we're promised that God will keep your heart and your mind, not right. mind, no matter what the circumstance is. Right. He loves you. He has sent his son to die and pay, and pay for this, your sins. And if you find out about him, he also promises you that comfort and that hope and that peace. Um, right. And, you know, money, your, your, your money problems may have passed for now. Uh, but if they're like mine, they come and they go. <laughs> right. you, uh, you know. Well, and and I, as far as the citrine shield and the and the um, the crystal, I confess I have no knowledge. I've never seen that in scripture. I've never seen it in biblical yeah. studies. I promise I will look it up. But yeah. I would say honestly, we have God's word revealed and written for us. And if our hope and trust is in Christ, he tells us, set your affections on things above. Now, we are on this earth, you know, for a short season, but our affections yes. should be on things above. And, and I would encourage you, like Ben says, you know, to, to get in the word, to know that there's good news. Paul wrote 13 books to you, about you, for you. He will tell you, I think, everything you need to know mm -hmm. about your time here on the earth. And he will strengthen you when you, you know, as you understand what God's doing and how he's working in this age of grace, that he's forgiven you all trespasses, that we're appointed to wrath. I mean, not, we're not appointed to wrath, but we are appointed to suffering mm -hmm. in this life. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of good, good things that we can put our hope and our trust in and, and uh, just rest on those promises. And I would encourage you really, and I'm, I'm like Ben and you, I know people who, you know, go into uh, the crystal or, you know, even get prayer handkerchiefs and stuff like that. But God has revealed exactly what he's doing in his word. And he says in 1 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given, 2 Timothy 3.16, that all scripture is given by, by inspiration, inspiration of God. God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, for... In, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness. righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect and by that listen perfect thoroughly furnished unto every good work you don't need a single thing in order to please god in order to live this life in order to do his will except this book mm -hmm. all scripture is given for you to do what he's called you to do mm -hmm. so to me i would say you don't need a crystal and you don't need you know this or that and and I don't know if this woman who is seeing this darkness or whatever is a Christian. And when someone says they're a Christian, you know, I would ask them, are you trusting solely in the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for your sins? I mean, because a lot of people yeah. call themselves Christians and, you know, you don't really know. But I would definitely yeah, put my faith in the word and, you know, avoid those exactly. other endless discussions. But I'm glad you called. I really appreciate that. Um, I know it's really nice when things are better, when times yes. are good, and um, it's definitely. Oh, believe me, I know. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad of that. But I'm, I'm glad that you're calling and watching and thinking, and I'm glad that you're. You know, I hope. To, I hope that we'll turn you more to His Word than to these other outside influences. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I absolutely agree. Well, thank and, you so and much. Thank you guys for th taking my call. Thank right, you thank very you. much. I'm gonna hang up. Now. I was afraid I was gonna hang up on her if I hung that back. <laughs> well, and you know those are very sincere questions, and that's why we're here. We want your sincere questions. Good evening. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Do you have a question? Uh, yes, ma'am. I have a question about the Holy Bible. About the Bible? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, let me ask you a question about uh, what did Luke say in his recording one, two, and three. Even 
even as if they believed them into us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seems good to me also, having that perfect understanding of all things, from the very first to write them and to thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Yes. You know this reading here? So Luke himself was not eyewitness to the knowledge he gathered and from from other witnesses and he was witness that was not God's words or inspired to him by God. So how can you still believe that the Bible is God's words? Okay, hold on. So just because he was not an eyewitness, you're saying that he was not inspired by God? Is that what your conclusion was? Okay, uh, can you turn your TV set down, please? <laughs> Is, was that your conclusion, that he was not inspired by God just because he wasn't an eyewitness? You see, ma'am, you have to look for the pages. You don't even know your Bible. Oh, uh, You're um, asking me a question like that. No, I'm asking you the, the you conclusion see, that you, you drew. If, if those are word, uh, God's word, you should have memorized them word by word. No, uh, no I don't I don't uh, so exactly. Can you uh, make your point again? Because I didn't quite me, catch let me, it. Let me give you some history about the Bible, okay? okay? Okay, well, hold on, Thank hold you on. Very much. You, wait, hold on. You didn't answer my question. Yes, ma'am. No, sir, I'm not going to give you the time to demonstrate your doctrinal view on this broadcast. Right. Well, then ask me the question. Right, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't understand your question to, uh, first off, right. so if you want to back up okay. and start over again. I believe that your point was, since Luke was not an eyewitness, that he was not... Uh, inspired by God. Is that what you said? That, and so why is it scripture? Was that your point? Yes, I said that Luke himself, mm -hmm. right, stated that he was not an eyewitness, sure. and the knowledge he gathered was from eyewitnesses and not as words inspired to him by God. Well, he that doesn't. Was in a recording one, he doesn't two, say. He, didn't, he doesn't say that. Yes, we, we need to, do, do we need to read the verse? Yeah. You see. You don't even know what I'm talking yes. about. Do you have those verses? Yeah, no. They... Yeah, okay, well, find them before you okay, talk to I'll, me. I'll, if you want to talk to me after the program, okay. you can call me and we'll talk about it. So why why like can't I said, you just answer my okay, question? Okay, I'm going to answer your question. I mean, if you were people of God, you should have memorized the, the Bible. Well, okay. Well, and, know, and know the Bible word by word since those are God's words. Thank you very well, much. Okay. You can call me after the show. All right, you can call after the show, but I am going to address me, Can I just give you some history about just the device? Um, no, the not right now. We're going to let people call in. But I do want to say... I have not memorized the entire Bible. In fact, I haven't even memorized probably one person. I do not understand what he's... Okay, uh, but I, I think couldn't. what he's saying is that in Luke 1, verse 2, Luke writes, Even as they delivered them unto us, uh, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Hold on. So he's saying, it was, he's saying these things were delivered to Luke. So Luke's just writing down what he heard. Okay. So he's saying he wasn't inspired. He just wrote down what he heard. I understood that part. So, but he says, you know, so he's he's challenging the the idea the inspiration that, that Luke, what, Luke. What did not that, see the Lord Jesus Christ on the earth. And so Luke says these people relayed this to him. Excuse me. Uh, heaven or hell? Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I would like to uh, talk to. I'd like to make a statement, please. All right, go ahead. Uh, about the lady that called about the crystals earlier. Right. I have some Bible passages that I think might help her. Okay, good. Uh, Deuteronomy 18, 10, 12. Okay. Verse Chronicles 10, 13, 14. Good. Uh, Revelation 21, 8. Okay. And Isaiah 47, 11 through 15. All right. Well, I thank you for your input. We'll let her research those, and we will do that likewise. Thank you And much. I have one other comment okay. to make, if I may. All right. To the gentleman you had just a moment ago, Yes. judge not that you be not judged. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And that's all I have to say. Thank, thank you. you. Bless thank, you. Thank you. Um, I wonder if that gentleman knew the whole scripture by heart. Uh, no, well, the thing okay. about it is, is he's taking the, the verse now that I'm on okay. the same page as him. Right. Well, and I have to say in our defense, it is harder to understand when that somebody's accent is different, you know. And, and he when he said Luke 1 to 3, whatever, and I knew because in Acts 1 and in Luke 1, we know Luke's writing. Right. And, you know, had knowledge of all things from the beginning. 
Okay, go ahead. Well, let me read it now. Um, for in verse one. Good luck. No, 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 he's probably coming back. Good evening. Back. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Do you have a question? Yeah, so now you, you blame me to my accent. <laughs> no. Could not, you know what? Uh, could not find the answer. You blame me to my accent. No, we're not blaming on your accent. I'm just saying he didn't even know what passage we were on because... Well, we, we Sir, the thing what, about it is, is this Jesus. is... So what, what makes you better than me because of your accent? Oh, wow. Well, I'm not going there because I didn't say anything about you. Did you get his number? You. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I I'm thank you for your interest, and I appreciate you watching, but... I don't who are who is the were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word in that passage? The, the twelve. That's right. Is the Luke 12. one of the twelve? No. But Luke was back here in Acts. If you go back to Acts, right. he was eyewitnesses and all the things that took place and through the Apostle Paul's ministry. Uh, Luke, out of um, just as much as anybody traveled with the Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. and he's seen all the miracles and all the all the sign gifts that took place in the early uh, ministry of the Apostle Paul. Um, he uh, was under the doctrine of the Apostle Paul. He's seen the trans transition from the Jewish um, right. faith into the faith which is... Uh, what we now know, the preaching of the cross. See, the, the Jewish faith was there's going to be a Messiah coming. He's going to save you from your enemies. The, the Lord's going to come down, and he's going to save you from them that hate you. Mm -hmm. And that's what they were looking for. They were looking for that Messiah to come back on, on a white charger and to basically um, save them from the enemies of, of the nation. And, and God had... Um, uh, God had um, sent them off into judgment. They mm -hmm. went into Babylon, uh, and from there they were always, it was called the times of the Gentiles. And they were looking for that time when God would come back uh, and, and judge the nations and save them from their enemies. Is that him again? Don't hang. Okay. Um, sir, I just want to ask you, call us after the show. We'll be happy to talk to you right. about anything you want. But our our point is, not that we're perfect, not that we know everything. We just want to encourage people to read God's Word and believe it for what it says. Mm -hmm. And I would appreciate it if you would stop calling. Really? Um, and just leave the lines open for other people at six, 7 o'clock. The line will be open. That is my phone you. number right there on the screen. Yes, if you want to talk to me about it, we'll talk. 406-5449. All right. There you go. And that's very good because we are more than willing to argue, discuss, debate, but this is not the format. Yeah, for I, you know, we 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 come on here to, to be helpers of people's joy. Yes. And we're definitely not here to finance somebody to come and, and debate with us on right. uh, live TV. Right. And, um, and I, you know, I, I would appreciate, I don't mind someone throwing a hard question or disagreeing with us, mm -hmm. but I would only appreciate them listening at least right. to our response. Not making their philo philosophical viewpoint right. about how the, right. the Bible can't be trusted. Or, well, I'm not even sure what his point was. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I couldn't get past yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway, so yeah, so, so as far as the canon of Scripture... Uh, I don't know what supports the other writers that, mm -hmm. that said, God inspired me. These are God's inspired words. I don't think that's true in that's the That's not other really a big deal to me because James wasn't uh, one of the apostles either. Right. Um, and so, uh, right. and the only, the only apostles that were with Christ from the beginning were, were the ones there in the early Acts period. We have another call. Okay. okay. Good evening. Thank you for calling Heaven or Hell. Do you have a question for us? Yeah, sure do. Good. Go ahead, please. Yeah, do you think Obama's the Antichrist? I do not, but thank you. I think that's a very good question. Thank you. He's not smooth enough for that. <laughs> not silk as smooth as butter, thick as butter. <laughs> Come in saying peace and safety. I don't think what we really need to worry about the Antichrist as much yeah. as we need to find out who Christ is, though. That's where you're going to get the spiritual understanding and growth. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for the Antichrist, you're going to be... Uh, chasing your tail, trying to figure out who he is, because um, we're not just we're just not given that information uh, clearly. There's been many, many men, and it happened here recently, trying to predict mm -hmm. who the Antichrist is going to be and when the end of, end of the world is going to come. And there's been many, many men that's right. wrong. Right. 
Um, the big thing for us to do is to be conformed to the image of God's dear Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and you do that by studying the Word of God and allowing God to do the work in your heart and in your mind that He can do. That's uh, Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing. He which began a good work in you shall perform it into the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, you are... You are um, you are saved for the purpose unto good works, of course. But the good works that happens is that you study the Word of God, you have an appreciation for the doctrine, for the commandments, and for the ordinances that come out of the out of the Word of God, and you have an appreciation for those things, and those things produce the spiritual fruit that you have access into the the love, and the joy, the meekness, the long suffering. I would have answered that though. I mean, I agree with all that. I don't disagree with anything you said. But I would have said I don't worry about is, if somebody's the Antichrist or if he's already alive or who it is, because to me, if you're saved and sealed and a child of God, mm -hmm. you have not been appointed under wrath. And that wrath program goes all the way back to Genesis, mm -hmm. the you know seven years of tribulation and time of Jacob's trouble and all those things. And that wrath, you read Daniel nine. You know, it's poured out on unbelieving Israel, okay, or the unbelieving world. So I know if I'm saved and sealed, and I'm not trying to say I don't care about anything else because I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. I don't mean that at all. But I don't worry about the Antichrist mm -hmm. or who he is because I won't be here when that great tribulation comes. That's what I would have said. Hallelujah, I'm not appointed under that wrath. And that's what the Antichrist is doing. He's coming in mm -hmm. to complete that 70th week of Daniel. Right you know to fulfill that and that's the, getting back to what you know what we're talking about a minute ago the antichrist is the instrument of god's wrath on the nation israel and the rest of the world mm -hmm. uh so that's just the beginning of god coming back and taking a wrath and vengeance on the world who did not trust him did not trust his christ did not trust his ministers mm -hmm. Um, and, and God basically dissolving this earth, this earth, mm -hmm. the heaven and the earth, in a terrible, terrible heat and judgment mm -hmm. and, and anger. Uh, and, you know, people try to put that out of their mind like that's not coming. But I hate to say it, this, this world's probably not going to get a whole lot better before it... it Get before it's over with. Right. Uh, but we have confidence that, and we know that God has saved us, and that we will be with Him and His Christ in eternity for the rest of eternity. Mm -hmm. And that is something that you can put your trust in and mm -hmm. put your hope in, and that'll produce in you a steadiness. And that's that you find out Christ, you find about out about Him, and that produces the steadfastness that you need to endure the hard times mm -hmm. in this life there's you know we go through troubles uh we go you know, financial woes family woes um all kinds of things yeah. can go on yeah. but Absolutely. no matter what we can always um be content godly contentment is great great gain mm -hmm. uh content and glory in our tribulations, and that glory is the manifestation of God, no matter what the circumstance yeah. is. And it's glory, yeah, not maybe not glory in the tribulation, but glory in spite of the tribulation. Well, the verse says glory <laughs> in that. tribulation, have, and that means to not. manifest God's glory <laughs> yeah. in your tribulation, right. no matter what. I that's know. what the and Lord Jesus the Christ did when He was in the garden, sweating drops of blood. Right. He manifested God's glory, no matter what the tribulation right. in His right. circumstance. Right. He was still manifesting right. God. But, and God's I, glory. I think it's going to be impossible to do if we don't fill ourselves up continually. Right. And totally renew our minds. Right. And let Him change our viewpoint and understand what He's doing and why. Because if I'm expecting God to do something that He's not, mm. I'm not going to have that godliness. I mean, right. that contentment, sorry. Right. Yeah, if you're expecting God to save you out of your circumstance, and right. then one time he doesn't, then you right. think, oh, well, God's mad at me, so that's right. why he didn't do it. Or I'm right. off track. I'm not trusting the right thing, right. Uh, which is you know, the, the case in that, in that instance. Right. But it always keeps you guessing about what you're supposed to be doing and what you're not supposed rather to be doing. Rather than knowing what he's doing. And it, rather right. than knowing what he's doing and keeping you steady and confident mm -hmm. and sure that you mm -hmm. have salvation, God loves you, he's offered you 
you all spiritual blessings and giving them to you in heavenly places, um, you know, and then just go out there and allow God to make you the best person that you spiritually can be. And where the mind goes, the body goes also. And you won't become sinless in your lifetime, but you will start to have a sinless um more more sinless state you will uh you will i mean there's always anybody given the right circumstance is capable of committing sin right i mean that's the that's the god god's honest truth Mm -hmm. if you're pinned down and you uh you know whatever the case may be right right. you could sin. as long as you're in this body yes right your flesh i mean is it it's weak. There. It's weak. It wants to get out of trouble. It wants to lie about it sometimes. Mm-hmm. If it if it's if it's it covets, mm-hmm. it, it's like you know it'll steal for w- what it wants. Uh, that's what the flesh desires to do. The heart is <clears throat> deceitful above all else and continually wicked. Mm-hmm. And that's talking about our heart. Mm-hmm. What our heart. Um, <clears throat> Uh, desires and, and and covets and how deceitful it is to tricking you to, and, into doing something that you know you really shouldn't be doing. Mm-hmm. Even though you might be saved, uh, the the flesh is always there, uh, lusting after the the spirit and the spirit lust after the flesh also. Right. Well, and let me see who this is. Gonna... Is that a two one five number? Because I think he's calling. No, it's an eight six five two four seven. Um, but Paul says in Philippians 4, 9, and this goes back to a lot of these questions that we are interested in. I'm not saying don't be interested in them. You know, there are a lot of things like, who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? You know, and I think we need to talk about those questions in life. But I do like what Paul says, and I think this is an answer to almost anything anybody could ask in Philippians 4, 9. Those things which you've both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you Mm. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles Paul is the apostle for this age of grace Paul was the minister to the uncircumcision Uh, you know when you when you study your Bible in times past you have all the prophetic program all the things revealed through the prophets and about Israel and about their earthly kingdom and about their future blessings and the kingdom on the earth and then Christ comes and they think okay here's the Messiah and he and he is he was and then they're really puzzled when he's crucified Mm -hmm. you know wait a minute we thought he was going to be the one that was going to redeem us and protect us from our enemies and do all these things but Israel had been in a state of rejection throughout the majority of times past so when he when um, Christ comes on the scene he dies on the cross in re- because of Israel's rejection, but that cross was now God's instrument to save all men. Mm-hmm. It wasn't now through Israel's agency and through their light that in, that we, the Gentiles, could be saved. Mm-hmm. It is now the salvation, the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Well, it, w- it was something that just never could have been seen, yeah. the way that he was going to use the nation of yeah. Israel to harbor a seed that would come and die for the yeah. sins of all men. Right. Uh, so, you know, the salvation uh, to the Gentiles is almost twofold in mm-hmm. a way. There's going to be a program where the nation of Israel is going to rise up and, and be a light to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles right. are going to hang on to the, the skirt of a Jew because uh, he says that God is with him. Him. Right. But uh, we now uh, uh, are, have, a, are, have a benefit of the nation of Israel's rise and fall uh, because through the nation of Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ was born and lived his earthly ministry, his life, and then died. And then God uh, told the secret when he called out the Apostle Paul about how he had always planned on his son coming and dying for the sins of all men. He had just kept it secret. And the reason why he kept it secret is in 1 First Corinthians two. chapter 2, mm-hmm. and it says, verse 7, or verse 6, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before our uh, before the world unto our glory. Mm-hmm. He ordained this before the world unto our glory, 
uh, which means that we can grow up, grow up into that glory, progressing to that glory. And it says, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they not, for that they had known it, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. And if they hadn't crucified the Lord of glory, he would have never, he would not have died and paid for your sin. And if he hadn't paid for your sin, then we would all be uh, in our sins. Uh, if he hadn't died, he couldn't have resurrected. Mm -hmm. And if he hadn't resurrected, you wouldn't have the, the promise and the hope of a resurrection life in eternity with him also. And that's what Paul says. If you continue on in Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul talks about if we have no resurrection, then we have no hope. We're, uh, of all men, most miserable. Mm -hmm. uh, if only in this life only we have hope. Uh, you know, what 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 is the benefit of just this life? I can't quote that passage, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, if in this life only, yeah, I, I can't. In this first we Corinthians, are all men most miserable. Um, if 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 we only have hope in this life only, mm -hmm. then that we let us eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. Right. As I guess is how the mm -hmm. passage goes there in First Corinthians, uh, chapter fifteen, and verse. Um, let's see here. Uh, verse 19 if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men most miserable but now is Christ risen from the dead and then where's the there was something about eat and drink but anyway yeah in uh, verse um 31, I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with the beast of Ephesus, what advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God, and I'll speak to your shame. Mm -hmm. Some don't understand the resurrection and what it means to be uh, redeemed by a person by one person, God's only son, coming into this world and dying and paying for the sins of all men. Mm -hmm. See, God was completely satisfied with the Lord Jesus Christ's death on the cross, and he proved it through his resurrection. And that's the rules that God the Father yeah. set down. It's his commandments. I didn't come up with the rules. Mm -hmm. That's just what he came up with. And some people have a really hard time accepting a free gift. So what happens when... Someone says, "Yeah, but I need to do this to mm. make sure. Or I need to, I need to, I need to be water baptized to make sure I'm saved. Mm -hmm. Or I need to, you know, well, follow this. I need to keep the commandments. I need to keep the Ten Commandments." To well, make sure. Paul says in Galatians that when you add to it, it makes the the cross a cross vain, right? Right. Uh, in, in verse 21 of uh, chapter two, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ, then Christ is dead in vain. Mm -hmm. So the and the law system is one, a system that says you need to do this and you need yeah. to do this and you need to do this. You need to be water baptized and you need to confess your sins and you need to do this. Look, look, God knows that you're a sinner. Right. He knows that you're a sinner. You don't have to confess your sins to him. He wants you to uh, know, that, know that fact about yourself. Right. Confess to yourself that you're a sinner and that you need some type of redemption. Right. And that redemption is through the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't frustrate the grace of God mm -hmm. by using a performance-based system because if you do that, then Christ is dead in vain is what the verse says, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, Galatians is a great book to, to demonstrate how to, that, how that people are not supposed to go under the law uh, and a warning to people that are teaching people that they have to go under the law. Right. Uh, you know, right here underneath this passage in Galatians 3... Same guy again. It says, um, oh, and it's one, excuse me, chapter 3, verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Uh, this only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Right. That's so important. You're saved by faith. He says, now walk in walk faith. Walk in faith, right. Walk in faith. And walk in newness of life. Don't go back. Don't put yourself back under a performance system. Right. And not only that, but don't 
teach people this, these principles either. Either if you go back to chapter one and verse six, it says, "I marvel that ye are so soon removed from Him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another gospel, but there be some that trouble you that would pervert the gospel of Christ." But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Mm -hmm. And as we said before, so I, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, there's a, the, the, the teaching that to, uh, to somebody that would teach any other gospel, mm -hmm. there's a curse that's put on you, and that curse uh, is, you know, probably, uh, well, it's probably unhappiness. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, what, um, it's yeah. probably, you know, well, it, Jesus Christ talks about it in his earthly ministry, um, in talking about the, the, the ministry to the little children. It'd be better for a man basically to tie a big weight around his neck and right. cast himself into the sea than right. to, to, to distract from the doctrine. Well, and as far as that Galatians 3.3, 3, you know, foolish Galatians who has bewitched you, and are you now made perfect by the flesh? The motivation for putting, when you put somebody back under the law, it doesn't motivate them to perform like filling yourself with God's word and, you know, letting it change you and renew you. I mean, the motivation to me should not be a performance system and being back under the law, but I need, I want to read this verse in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 and 15. Uh, if you'll let the love of Christ motivate you, it'll go so much further than that guilt. Week to week, I barely made it off the ground from the last week. Um, oh, and and, and the, the type of system that's superstitious even, uh, uh, you know, the, the things that we knew before we were saved, right. if you can let the love of Christ constrain you, they're right. going to be a better motivator, yeah. <laughs> motivator than anything yeah. else in your life. Yeah. And I guess you were reading chapter yeah. 5, verse uh, 14, and 14 15. 15. For, and this verse is just powerful, and it's a really good one to, to dwell on. For the love of Christ, his love for us, the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they, that which is us, they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. And that's permeated the conversation all night. You mm. keep talking about dying to self daily. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, for I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Galatians 2.20. Yeah, and, you know, and Paul says... I do not frustrate always, the grace of God. Yeah, and I'm always, bear, he always bearing about in the body... The dying of the Lord. The dying of the Lord. And that's the letting the mind of Christ dwell in you. That's being conformed to the image of his Son... See, he's just the yeah. the perfect example of the of a of a, a son uh, that's obedient to the father and desires to do the father's will, and uh, he was just the, the perfect example of that. And then we have the pattern us in the flesh, us in the flesh of the apostle Paul, and he says that he is the pattern. He was disobedient in his flesh. He was a blasphemer. Blasphemer. He was injurious to the church. Uh, he went around and did all kinds of, of things. Right. He had, you know, self-righteousness written all over him, but he did those things ignorantly. And God knew that he was a sinner, and he just called on Paul and gave him the gospel, mm -hmm. and, and and Paul trusted it. You know, Paul, I guess he was a person of faith even before he got saved. He just hadn't really heard the Right, the right like he message. said, my prayer, Romans 5, my prayer, my heart for Israel is that they might be saved because they have a zeal for God. Right. But they're not going about it. They're not trusting not in the, the right righteousness way. of Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think a good verse to close on would be Romans 5, 8. And I think we all need to realize that God can save even you. God can save you in whatever state you're in, whatever you think, wherever your sins are. Because Romans 5, 8 God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for all of us. He died for the ungodly. A righteous man wouldn't right. need a Savior. Right. 
And how will they hear if no one preached to them? So keep, keep fill yourself up with this truth and share it with somebody. Right. Thank you very much.